Our next uh, speaker is an adventurous arts manager, theater director and dramaturge. She is the festival producer of One Yellow Rabbit's High Performance Rodeo. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. She is um, Calgary's international, oh, sorry, there was, there was more to that sentence. I just, I just jumped on it a little too soon. Let me just like, okay. She is the festival performance producer of One Yellow Rabbit's High Performance Rodeo, Calgary's International Festival of the Arts, the thing we're all a part of right now. Ladies and gentlemen, days and thems, put your hands together for Laurel Green. Hello. Hello. Okay, Hello. so everyone can hear me, great. All right. They said, get set up, then press the button. Very good advice. <laughs> okay, here I go. I'm so excited that Pachekacha is part of the High Performance Rodeo this year. The theme tonight is a word that I use all the time to describe this festival, wild. I'm going to share a brief history of the festival now in its 34th year, produced by One Yellow Rabbit, a company that wrote the book on wild, or rather had the book written about them. In 1987, Michael Green, co-artistic director of The Rabbits, started the High Performance Rodeo in an elevator. To attend the Secret Elevator Experimental Performance Festival, you called for directions to a mystery location, were ushered into an elevator, transported to a 35-seat theater, which was actually the converted office of the company's general manager in the Soma building on 8th Avenue. <laughs> Michael smuggled in an audience, hoped that none of them were cops or the fire marshal. <laughs> Artists pro uh, performed wild scenes, played on toy pianos, climbed out the windows and partied on rooftops. Word of mouth spread and it sold out. In 1988, the company moved into the newly built Calgary Center for the Performing Arts and the Secret Theater. One Yellow Rabbit decided to produce a second festival and Michael chose a new name, cribbing high performance from a pretentious art magazine and adding rodeo for a Calgary twist. A rodeo, by nature, is a dynamic and risky event. Michael would later describe his role as Tom Sawyering, fellow artists getting their start in Calgary to perform. Dancers, poets, comedians, visual artists, musicians, actors, and those that could not be defined. This early rodeo was described as an avant-garde gong show minus the gong. It was an alternative event in every way on the heels of the 88 Olympics. The festival grew to a second venue, the Rehearsal Hall of Theatre Calgary, and then in 1994, the Rabbits tore out the floor and made their theatre into the now big secret theatre, a black box with attitude and a bar. <laughs> By 1995, the rodeo grew to audiences of 900 people in the elegant Jack Singer Concert Hall. The 10th anniversary was celebrated with headliner Bruce McCullough of Kids in the Hall fame. The rodeo was a place for artists who made this city home and decided to grow their practice here. It began to register on the national cultural radar. The rodeo taught not only Calgary theater artists, but Calgary theater audiences to be open to the novel and to embrace the wild, to choose the unexpected. It brought shows here normally reserved for Montreal and Toronto, and Michael invited artists who had never heard of Calgary to Calgary. The audiences loved them, the artists were grateful, and then there was the occasional show that provoked an outrage. <laughs> Lori Anderson, Marie Schwenard, Brian Eno, Philip Glass, Hot Route Honey, Lucha Vavum, Tanya Tagak, Kronos Quartet, just some of the incredible artists that have played here over the years. Michael was dedicated, even while presenting these illustrious professionals and celebrities, to still include the amateurish and early career acts in the festival to keep its rough and tumble, renegade beginnings. As he grew as a curator, he became just as interested in plus 15 art parades and dance parties in Olympic Plaza as he did in the hottest touring sensation. High Performance Rodeo fostered an incredible ecology of artists here in Calgary through an atmosphere of collaboration and experimentation. It became a launch pad. It inspired the growth of many local companies and kick-started other festivals. The 10 Minute Play Festival, each rodeo featuring six Calgary indie companies, just celebrated its anniversary with a sold out show on last Saturday night. Michael went on to found Making Treaty 7 and was the creative director of Calgary 2012. In 2015, he was tragically killed in a car accident alongside five others. 
his contributions to this city and his loss continue to be deeply felt. This international avant-garde festival in the middle of the prairies knocked down barriers, both creative and geographic. The choice to build this festival here is one that Avenue Magazine profiled as one of the 20 decisions that shaped Calgary. As festival producer, I asked the question, what can the High Performance Rodeo do for Calgary today? How can we invite new artists and audiences into the festival? As the city grows and changes, what does the next decade of the High Performance Rodeo look like? What are its values? I've been a festival artist and an active audience member since I moved to Calgary eight years ago. And I remind myself of the rodeo's beginnings and of the potential for this festival to be a place for everyone. We've got an incredible hardworking team and I've created two new roles, a festival associateship in partnership with the Center for Newcomers, Nisreen from Jordan joins us this year, and an indigenous community liaison. Chantal, who you met earlier, brings practices and protocols and ways of knowing to connect artists and community on Treaty 7 territory. The Rodeo's Beautiful Young Students program is growing. This year, we've got the first high school production ever in the High Performance Rodeo. <laughs> Revolution or Slumber by Western Canada High School. Opening tomorrow, this is performed by an amazing group of radical young people. They are hopeful and unafraid. The 2020 festival includes pop stars, gold medal Olympians, visiting artists from Norway and New York, and incredible performances by Calgary artists at all stages of their career. It's 27 shows at 13 venues for three wild weeks. There's podcasts and pachekacha alongside theater, music, and dance. On Friday, we presented a sold out CBC, The Secret Life of Canada podcast show hosted by Phelan Johnson and Leah Simone Bowen decolonizing stories of Calgary. They posed in the Michael Green Green Room, right backstage here at the library. In 2019, the High Performance Rodeo celebrated a milestone of over 19,000 audience members. And this year, we've already had many shows sell out in week one, including tonight's event. Picking up this year's festival guide, it's overflowing with energy. I guarantee you haven't seen it all, and I double dare you to try. <laughs> As Calgary continues to grow, there are new voices to be included and new forms to explore. It is essential that we continue to show up, to gather in community, to listen, and to share. For 34 years, the High Performance Rodeo has brought exceptional performances and vital experiences to Calgary as a catalyst for creation and participation, offering something wild for everyone. Here's to many more adventures ahead. Thank you very much. Woo!